Welcome, I'm Gabriel. Today we are going to get started in a marathon of videos in the subject of science and pseudoscience. To do so, we'll first define these concepts. What is science and scientific method? Curiosity is something that makes children ask themselves about why the sky is blue or why does the water freeze. The wish of understanding how things work is a scientist's ability whose origin is a child. Just like Marie Curie once said, a scientist in his laboratory is not a mere technician, he is also a child confronting natural phenomena that impress him as though they were fairy tales. Utilizing both repetitive and systematic observation and experimentation, science searches for a truth for its studies, although it needs to be constantly investigated since it's impossible to state an absolute truth in the scientific world. However, it's not enough if a scientist vaguely says and writes about a phenomena that he is studying. When the experimentation is not possible, the scientist needs to create assumptions that prove his statements, whether based in observation, calculations, or a theory. However, if possible, he must go to his lab and recreate the same ambient conditions as where the phenomena occurs, and detailedly describe the conditions, so he can begin with his experiment, starting up the process called scientific method. The scientific method is basically a guide about how to do science. With it, you can find where to begin, how to prove your argument, and if successful, how to spread out your findings. The picture on screen shows us better these steps. In the beginning of the 20th century, the time of the great peak of discoveries in science, an old question came back to torment the scientists. How did life emerge? Using the scientific method, Alexander Oberyn and John B. S. Haldane committed to answer it. During their studies, they sought to know how the Earth's atmosphere was made and came to the conclusion that it was mostly composed of NH3, CH4, H2, and H2O. And so, the famous experiment of Oberyn and Haldane began, which consisted of simulating the same conditions of the atmosphere, placing the mentioned elements on a closed circuit with electrodes to simulate electrical discharge. At the end of the experiment, there could be seen the birth of microbeings called Hua surveys. The theory was very well accepted by most of the scientific community, and until today is the closest theory to the reality. We now understand what science and scientific methods are, but what about pseudoscience? Basically, pseudoscience is about theories and beliefs that are said to be true or scientific but they take it as an advantage to a distorted scientific method that satisfies their goals. One of the most famous examples of pseudoscience nowadays is the Flat Earth. People who believe it states that Earth is shaped like a pizza. Gravity is a hoax, and Sun and Moon are closer to Earth than we expect. To explain their beliefs, the Flat Earthers constantly say the fact that we can't see the curve of the horizon. But this just shows us their lack of referential notion. Since for an observer who is close to the ground, the curvature of the Earth would be imperceptible. Just as it is, if you were a flea and for not seeing the curvature of the dog, you conclude that the dog is flat. Now, to explain why gravity doesn't exist, flat earthers ask how it is strong enough to keep beauties on the ground, while it cannot prevent simple birds from flying freely. This highlights their lack of knowledge about the concepts of inertia and acceleration. There are many studies which contradict these ideas. And among them, we can highlight Zach Newton's theory of universal gravitation, which states that gravity makes large portions of mass attract each other equally in all directions. In this way, matter tends to occupy smaller and smaller spaces, both radius tend to be equal in all directions. And the only shape that admits such a condition is the spherical one. Another observation which contradicts this theory has been done by Eratosthenes, the first person to almost faithfully measure the circumference of the Earth in 240 before Christ, while in the library of Alexandria, he read from an ancient parchment that a well in the city of Siena at noon on the first day of the summer solstice will cast no shadow. But on this very day, at this very hour, the Tower of Alexandria cast a measurable shadow. This led him to the following hypothesis. The spherical geometry of the Earth was responsible for the difference in the observations. If the Earth were flat, there would be no such distinction. Either there would be shadow in both places, or there would be no shadow in either one of the places. 
With that, he took two sticks and placed them on each city and watched them during the day. While the rod that was in Shiana did not cast any shadow, the rod that was in Alexandrina cast a shadow with an angle of inclination of approximately 7 degrees. Using the distance between the two cities as a basis, which is 800 kilometers, he determined that 360 degrees would be approximately 50 times the distance between these two cities, and thus concluded that the circumference of the Earth would be approximately 40,000 kilometers, with a deviation of only 5% compared to the measurements made today by satellites. The big difference between science and pseudoscience is that science uses the scientific method, while pseudoscience is often guided by popular consensus and unquestionable truths. That is, it does not match the scientific method. It is necessary to observe, question, create hypotheses, and carry out experiments to reach a conclusion and obtain the results. This video was made by André, Gabriel, Marco Tullio, Pedro, and Rafael. Thank you so much for watching. Please, don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I hope you enjoyed it. See ya!